Okay, so let's get started. Um, my name is Alex Brano. I will be talking about real-time analytics with HBase. At Symmetrix, we use HBase to use our performance monitoring and search analytics services. So I'm here to share our findings. You can check out those services downstairs. We have we have a booth. Um, I will try to speak fast because I have only less than 20 minutes, and I think there's quite a lot of information in there. So sorry for doing that in the morning. A uh, little bit of information about me. I also shared many things I will be talking about at our blog, where you will find more details on specific parts of the presentation, as well as some other things, some other thoughts and ideas which were not included in it. So the plan is to cover the following, uh, the problem statement and the use case requirements. I will briefly describe the initial approach that we used. Then I will introduce the append-only updates approach, which uh, changed uh, the behavior of our services towards processing data in real time. And then I will um, briefly cover the implementation that we use, this small open source project, uh, which can be nicely integrated into your existing HBase client code. So let's start with the typical use case. Um, our services, uh, systems monitoring and uh, search analytics, are the typical systems which receive data from multiple sources. Uh, and on the output, they have a bunch of interactive reports. I should stop here and say that uh, while I took this type of use case for introducing the append-only updates approach, it is by far not limited to it. You'll see that it is quite a generic idea and can be applicable in many cases where you need to update a lot of data in HBase. So this is the real, uh, the real world uh, example of reports that we have. Uh, it shows the statistics of search engine. Note that on, uh, on the right side you can um, select the time interval and granularity, and also you can use filters to narrow down the data selection. So requirements are typical. There's a high volume of input data. Reports should be fast. Uh, they should uh, show uh, many filters, uh, show slices by many dimensions. They should allow navigation through many historical data. Uh, should allow display time intervals of different sizes from times from uh, minutes to years. Ideally, data should be visible. Data changes should be visible on the charts in real time. By that I mean as soon as data comes in into the system. Uh, the direct way would be to just get all the data which comes in and store it and uh, serve it to the user. I, and it works well in many uh, cases and used successfully, for example, by OpenTSDB. Uh, while reading speed, uh, while writing speed is not going to be a problem due to very fast uh, write operations in HBase, reading can be really problematic, especially if you want to uh, show large interval of very finely collected data points. So in that case, uh, creating pre views of data for reports we want to show uh, can help us. This leads us to a lab-like solution when we use uh, input data uh, to create pre-aggregated views uh, based on aggregation rules which are dictated by reports we want to show. Important thing to note here is the, uh, that the more filters and dimensions we add to reports, the more aggregated records we need to keep and update. And if um, updates are performed in a simple read modify write way as shown in the picture, this means huge amount of random access operations during processing of input data, and uh, update throughput will be reached very quickly. Uh, so uh, th there, are no, there are basically a number of things you can uh, do to improve the update throughput, uh, like we try to utilize um, HBase counters to save on round trip operation from, client, from server to client. But they, in, in many cases, it's just not enough. And more or less, for example, counters are not flexible enough. You cannot update really complex data structures with their help, for example, bitmaps and such. So in this case, uh, batch-based processing usually used. Um, it helps to process data more efficiently in batches. And this reduces the amount of update operations you need to perform. And in fact, this is what we used initially in our services. 
Uh, while it uh, improves things significantly, it uh, has its own limitation and doesn't, limitations and doesn't solve all the things we want. The major limitation is it's just not real time. And even if we try to go closer to real time, that means that we'll probably end up processing data in very small chunks, which will, again, increase the amount of update operations we need to perform. So now uh, let's get rid of all those issues and go back to real time with append only updates approach. So what do we need to um, do to process data in real time in our case? Uh, the most important thing is increase update throughput. Another thing uh, which also would uh, nice to have is the ability to roll back a set of changes. Uh, as we need to store um, a lot of historical data, uh, the aggregated values can be corrupted by uh, you know, deployed some bug to production or some developer mistake or some other failures. So it would be really nice if we uh, could just roll back that set of changes, then fix the issue and uh, reprocess particular piece of data again. Another important thing that would be nice to uh, have is uh, ability to uh, handle high peaks of input data, which results in a lot of uh, in sudden increase of update operations. If we could just uh, do the minimum operations during uh, the peak time and postpone all the, or mo most of the work to the off-peak time, it would be uh, really great. If we could at the same time serve data with uh, the most recent changes to user. The good news is that we can do it. Uh, the idea is just to uh, defer processing updates to just postpone them. So how does it work? There are three steps. First, get rid of get operation during updating data. Just uh, store uh, data which needed to perform the actual update as a separate record, place it near the record we want to update. Then run periodic jobs to merge those appended records that were added on the first step. And um, third, as we want users to always see the most recent changes, uh, we may need to perform merge on the fly if, they, uh, if those appended records were not processed yet by periodic jobs. Let's get a uh, closer look at each step. So as you can see, we don't change existing data while processing the input. Uh, what we do is we append uh, the data we, which is needed for update as a separate record and place it right near the record we want to update and put operations. So we basically have only put operations during processing data, and put operations are really, really fast in HBase. Later, we can uh, merge those appended records uh, with the help of MapReduce job, so that in the end, um, updated records look the same as if they were updated in simple read, modify, right way. Uh, important thing to note here is um, that multiple uh, updates are performed at once, uh, they are not, not, not individually. They, this, really, uh, this is really efficient if you want to update some complex structures which you need to load into the memory. And finally, uh, we may need to uh, merge records on the fly uh, so that the most recent changes are visible to user even if this periodic job uh, haven't ran yet. Uh, we could also store the merge result back to the um, system, back to the age base, so that we don't process uh, the same data again. So what are the ultimate benefits uh, of using this approach? We have a significant increase of update throughput, um, which allows us to process data in real time where we couldn't before. Uh, we have uh, this significant improvement because we just do just simply writing no random get operations. Uh, they are processed more efficiently. Uh, high peaks of load uh, handled better because we just can postpone uh, processing of uh, uh, the actual processing of updates to any time and do it at any speed. And this does not really affect the how uh, like the visibility of changes to the user. Uh, there is an ability to roll back changes. Um, failures of tasks which write data to HBase are handled automatically. Uh, for example, this is very efficient in when running MapReduce jobs and such. And update operation uh, becomes 
idempotent and uh, atomic, and this makes it very easy to scale horizontally the components which write data to HBase. So let's get a closer look at some of them. I don't have time to go through each of them. So uh, as I said, efficient updates come with the fact that we, don't, we, we do less uh, operations uh, to update the to apply those updates, and we, most importantly, we apply multiple changes at once. It is, uh, this approach is very efficient in cases where uh, uh, there is large portion of these updates are essentially inserting new records. In this case, we just don't do redundant uh, attempt to read non-existing data we want to update. Uh, as uh, updates are essentially appended records. Uh, it makes it really easy to roll back if we haven't merged yet. Uh, and even if we want to be able to uh, have ability to roll back changes after merge was done, we can do the following. We can configure uh, processing of updates so that it merges uh, data in groups, merges those appended records in groups, uh, group are based on uh, timestamp. For example, uh, on the picture, you can see we merge those updates which uh, happen to be in the same um, one hour interval. Uh, this uh, makes it where, uh, this makes it, uh, this allows us basically to roll back any set of changes based on one hour granularity, which is usually enough. This is one, one of my favorite benefits, and um, this is actually why it all started. It's not really about the real-time uh, data processing, but um, it really helps uh, when you process data in, with the help of MapReduce job. You see, writing uh, from MapReduce job to HBase can be tricky because um, there, it's not a rare case when some task fails, and it handle, and handles uh, handled uh, well by the MapReduce framework, uh, this failed task will be just restarted maybe on some other node, maybe even several times. But from the uh, data in HBase standpoint, this can be really problematic. Because if uh, this failed task managed to write something to HBase, the next, the next task attempt will just produce duplicate data, or just duplicate changes. It, and it can corrupt the data. Uh, here, as we don't actually change existing data while processing the input, uh, this basically handled automatically. The duplicated changes produced by different task attempts, they are essentially the same appended records. They, they have the same uh, row key, so they just override each other, and in the end, uh, this change is applied only once. This makes uh, tasks idempotent, and uh, their failures handled automatically by my previous framework. And I, also, I, I should also say that um, this also applies to the whole MapReduce jobs because, it, well, if uh, MapReduce job fails, we can just restart it and data will be okay after that. I cannot finish uh, describing it without naming major cons. Uh, most of them are actually implementation specific uh, and some of them even depend depends on the HBase version. The major con is that as we need to process data on the fly while reading data, it can be like, it can make reading uh, slower, but with proper configuration of uh, this product map use jobs and, uh, and, 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 and such things, uh, the data which uh, needed to be processed on the fly can be <coughs> well limited. Uh, so it's not, it's not re really um, an issue for us at least. Um, I don't think I have time to get into other cons, but they are actually like implementation specific and there are workarounds around them. So I'm going to finish up the whole story by introducing the implementation that we use. Uh, it is an open source project, HBase HUD. HUD stands for High Update Throughput. Uh, it is a very simple uh, Java library which acts as the wrapper of the core, um, of some of the core HBase classes. And it implements some of the basic uh, interfaces of HBase client API, which makes it very easy to integrate into your existing uh, HBase client code. Uh, 
to use it, you, you just uh, need to put the, get the jar and put it into the age-based coin cost path. You can uh, also put it into the region server cost path to be able to uh, make use of server-side optimizations, like server-side filters and some pieces of coprocessors. It basically implements uh, all the things that I've been talking about. Uh, it processes data on the fly behind the result scanner interface. Uh, there is a is job implementation for purely compact compaction of those uh, appended records. There is a MapReduce job implementation for rolling back changes. The, let's see several examples. The writing is very, very uh, easy. The only thing that uh, HBase HUD does, it adjusts the row uh, of the uh, record that we are writing so that it does not override existing record and places uh, this piece of data right near to it. There is also, um, there is also a result scanner implementation which performs uh, merging on the fly of the records, if there are any, of course. And note that you need to uh, provide um, implementation of update processor which holds the actual logic how those appended records are merged. Its interface is very simple and it may remind you of a uh, reducer task. There is an iterable list of records and need, needed to be merged. For example, example, for example this uh, code calculates the maximum value for a specific column. So um, what are the next steps for this little project? Uh, it already uses some of the newer features of new releases of HBase, like it can process uh, data, it can merge those appended records on the fly, um, on the server side with the help of coprocessors. But there is actually room of improvement. We are looking into um, making use of newer atomic append operation which was added recently. Um, the most important thing is uh, we are looking into integrating uh, with async HBase library which provides alternative to HTable, H HBase client API. Uh, it really shines in many situations where HBase HUD is usually used. So there is a room of improvements. Uh, contributors are welcome. And I would say that this is used in production, if I haven't mentioned that before. So, yeah, I guess this is all I have. So, if there are any questions? Are there questions? There's an obvious comparison here to OpenTSDB. How would you compare them? Yeah, it's actually a good question and frequently asked question. I have a uh, slide while we're talking about it. Let me just open slide in the uh, bigger version of the presentation. So it's basically how, how, how do you compare? The short answer would be like it's like comparing apples and oranges because, well, OpenTSDB is a solid solution, so like a database while HBase HUD is just like library to be used in your code. What we can compare though is that um, how, what are the approaches used uh, in each of them. So OpenTSDB uses serve raw data approach. Whatever data comes in, it is just stored and uh, used to serve the uh, user uh, queries. And there is no aggregation on the data store level. While HBase HUD and this append on lab data approach used uh, meant for are the cases where you need to update records in HBase. And for example, to, uh, to keep those aggregated records, if that answers your question. Further questions? Okay, then again, thanks to the speaker. Thank you.